Hi everyone, this is May Park. Welcome to another alternate video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a floral card using the stamped die cuts. I'll be also sharing some tips on how to add details to your card. Make sure to watch this video until the end so you can take a glance at my craft desk as well. Here are some of the products I'm going to use in today's video. This flower arrangement stamp set includes three multi-layer flowers and two multi-layer leaf clusters. The sizes of the flowers and leaves are varied to help you make the perfect flower arrangements. You can find the stamp layering guide on the back of the stamp packaging or on the Altenew website. I'm also going to use the Hugs die from the Script Words die set. I was going to use the sentiment from one of these stamp sets, but I ended up using only die cut word for my sentiment. The other day, someone asked me how to choose the color combination for my floral images. I usually search for the floral illustration on Google. This time, I typed the floral arrangement illustration on black background into a search box. I really love this color combination, pink, purple, and a hint of gray. So I decided to use these ink colors from Altenew Dye Ink Collection. Since my flower arrangement stamp set is brand new, I'm going to seize my clear stamps using an eraser to prevent from getting splotchy images. You can also use some clear embossed ink to prep stamps for getting clear stamped images. I'm also going to ink up my stamps and then just keep stamping on a scrap paper. You don't need to do this prepping for all clear stamps, but I just wanted to make sure I don't get splotch images. Here is the list of my alternate clips that inks I'm going to use for my flowers and leaves. These inks are from the following color families, cherry blossom, shades of purple, and warm gray. For my stamping base, I'm going to use the alternate white paper 120 pound. I'm placing my paper inside the original misty stamping tool and I'm using magnets to hold the paper in place. I'm going to arrange the first layer of my two large flower stamps and ink up the stamps with pink diamond ink. Then I'm closing the misty door to stamp the images onto my paper. I'm going to stamp one more time to get a nice and intense impression. Then I'm going to rotate my paper and stamp the same images one more time. If you don't have this misty stamping tool, you could use your regular acrylic block or stamp press for stamping. I'm just using my misty here because I want to stamp multiple images at once to save my time. This stamping tool also helps me stamp the images in a perfect placement and get a nice impression. As you can see here, I'm having the insert card of the flower arrangement stamp set next to me so I can look at the layering guide while stamping. However, alternate layering stamps are very easy to line up, so you won't need the layering guide so often. For the second and the third layer of my flower, I'm stamping the images with a pinkalicious ink and rubellite ink. For my purple flower, I'm stamping the bottom layer image with a soft lilac ink, the second layer image with lavender fields ink, and the top layer image with deep iris ink. For my leaves, I decide to go with a gray color rather than choosing the typical green color. If you are struggling with choosing the color scheme for your floral projects, you can go with any traditional color combo like red, yellow, and green. However, if you'd like to step up your designs to the next level, I recommend you go outside your comfort zone by adding one of the achromatic colors like gray or indigo to your color combination. Once my stamping is done, I'm going to do some die cutting. I'm pulling up my dies from the flower arrangement die set and snip apart my dies and trim off the little metal tabs using the wire cutter. I'm going to place my dies and secure them on my stamped panel using washi tape so that they won't move while die cutting. After placing my dies and paper between cutting plates, I'll be running them through my Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine. By the way, I'm using a small plastic tray to store my dies and die cuts in one place. 
That way I can find them very quickly and I can also prevent from losing them while I'm working on my project at the mesh desk. After a quick comparison, I decided to use the black cardstock to create some contrast for my colorful die cuts. I already cut alternate jet black cardstock in 4 and a quarter inch by 5.5 inches and I'm mounting my black panel on the A2 size white top folding card base using alternate glue tape. I'm going to pull out the hog die from the script words die set and place my die on a piece of alternate gold mirror paper. Then I'll be running it through my mini blossom die cutting machine from alternate. I'm going to arrange my stamped die cuts on the front of my card. I'm just moving around my die cut pieces until I'm happy with the arrangement. Then I'm going to use press and seal to pick up all of my die cuts at once and I'll set it aside for a couple of minutes while I'm adding some dust to my entire card front using a white gel pen. As you probably know, I'm a big fan of adding dust to the background of my card. These little dust add such great details and interest to your card. If you haven't done so, I highly recommend you give it a try. Make sure to dry your paper before you move on to the next step, otherwise you'll ruin your white dust and make a mess on the background. I'm using my heat tool to speed up my drying time. Then I'm going to mount my die cut flowers and leaves on the cut front using 3M foam tape. This press and seal helps me place lots of die cuts back into original spot. I learned this tip from Jennifer McGuire and this is my first time trying press and seal and I absolutely love using it. It saves me so much time. After mounting all of my die cut flowers and leaves, I'm going to die cut the script word hugs five times using the alternate mini die cut machine. Then I'll be gluing five die cuts together to make them thick. To prevent from leaving any fingerprints or glue on the top layer of my die cut word, I'm using my tweezer and poker tool to press the die cut. I'm going to finish off my card by adding the die cut word using a glue pen to my card front. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and my card inspired you to create a card using color layering stamps. If you have any questions, please leave comments below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Before I go, I'm going to pull the camera back to show you how my craft desk looks like off the camera. I'm using my iPhone 8 and a very inexpensive clamp to film the video. Obviously, I'm a very messy crafter as you can see here. I push everything aside to each side of my desk until I finish my project. I try to clean up my craft space at the end of a project but not always. My creative brain works best in a messy space. Do you clean up your desk when your project is done? What does your desk or craft space look like at the moment? Please leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye!